TSMC Nanjing Plant Granted Equipment License Why is the U.S. loosening restrictions on chip equipment supplied to China? Why did the blockaders suddenly back down? Who could have imagined this? The United States, which had been clamoring about blocking Chinese chips to the heavens and even elevating chip controls to the level of Yet, they turned around and gave the green light to TSMC's factory in China. This 180-degree U-turn caused the global tech circle to explode. Wall Street chip analysts worked overnight to interpret the move, Silicon Valley tech tycoons posted tweets questioning it, and even the European Semiconductor Industry Association held emergency internal meetings to discuss the impact. Were those aggressive blockades and sanctions just political theater performed for the outside world? What exactly is the U.S. afraid of with this sudden, softening? Is its own supply chain unable to hold up, or is there a deeper geopolitical calculation? Hidden behind this is definitely an unspeakable secret strong enough to shake the global chip landscape. Some people might not understand, how important is this U.S. license? Let's use a plain English analogy. A chip factory is like a high-end restaurant, and U.S. equipment is the exclusive secret sauce. Without it, even the best chef can't make the signature dish. The TSMC Nanjing plant specializes in mature process chips, relying on U.S. etching machines and deposition equipment. This secret sauce. Once the previous waiver expired, the factory could have stopped operations at any time. This annual license is equivalent to directly renewing the restaurant's right to the sauce supply for a year, saving them from begging for approval every day. Even more disruptive to conventional wisdom is that not only TSMC, but Asian chip giants like Samsung and SK Hynix also received the same pass for their factories in China. Remember, the U.S. chip control rules since 2022 claimed they would cut off all channels for China to acquire advanced chip equipment. Now, even an industry leader like TSMC gets approved easily. Even more weirdly, just one month before the U.S. loosened its grip, the Chinese Ministry of Commerce announced the launch of an anti-discrimination investigation into U.S. restrict measures on integrated circuits. Could the connection between these two events be just a coincidence? Actually, this is no coincidence at all. It is a helpless compromise by the U.S. in the game of the global chip industrial chain. Next, let's dig into why the U.S. suddenly shifted from a deadlock blockade to selective loosening. There are three major secrets of the global chip industry hidden here, as well as the truth about the supply chain game between China, the U.S., and Europe. Secret number one, the U.S. blockade hurt its own companies first. Many people may not know that the lifeblood of U.S. chip equipment companies has long been tied to the Chinese market. According to semi-data, the global chip equipment market size in 2024 was $627 billion, with the Chinese market accounting for 35%. Top U.S. equipment manufacturers like Applied Materials and LAM Research derive over 20% of their revenue from China. The previous forced controls directly caused Applied Materials Q1 2025 revenue to plummet by 23%, and LAM Research laid off 1,500 employees. In contrast, European companies frantically grabbed market share in China during the gap left by the U.S. blockade. ST Microelectronics established an 8-inch silicon carbide joint venture with Sanin Optoelectronics in Chongqing in 2023, and in 2024, teamed up with Huahong Semiconductor to build a dedicated production line in Wuxi for automotive MCU chips. Relying on these two collaborations alone, ST Microelectronics revenue in China rose by 40% in 2024. Infineon was even more direct, with its CEO publicly stating that they would move some chip production to Chinese foundries because China accounts for a quarter of its automotive semiconductor business. Giving up the Chinese market would be equal to giving up a quarter of the global cake. This created a stark contrast. U.S. companies had their hands tied by government policies watching helplessly as European competitors stole the Chinese market. Meanwhile, European companies doubled down on China, making money and consolidating their supply chains. If the U.S. government continued to hold out, only its domestic companies would suffer. After all, companies want profits, not political slogans. When a blockade causes U.S. companies to lose the world's largest market, the government cannot withstand the pressure from businesses 
no matter how tough it talks. Secret number two, the U.S. cannot survive without China's mature processed chips. Many people think the U.S. only needs high-end chips, but that's not true. Sectors vital to people's livelihood and industry, such as automobiles, healthcare, and industrial machine tools, all use mature processed chips, and China happens to be the world's main supplier of these chips. A report by the U.S. Department of Commerce at the end of 2024 showed that over two-thirds of U.S. terminal manufacturers use mature processed chips made by Chinese foundries. The automotive industry has the highest reliance, with one-third of automotive chips in the U.S. market coming from China in 2024. The most typical example is the Nexperia stoppage event in 2024. At that time, Nexperia's China factory suspended exports due to equipment issues directly causing work stoppages at multiple Ford and GM factories in the U.S. Ford alone lost $400 million. This was the impact of just one company. If the TSMC Nanjing plant were to stop due to a lack of equipment, the supply chains of U.S. automotive and medical equipment companies would collapse. The TSMC Nanjing plant mainly produces chips of 28 nanometers and above. These are essential goods for U.S. civilian and industrial sectors. The U.S. simply cannot afford the cost of a supply chain interruption. Europe saw this reality clearly long ago. The executive vice president of NXB publicly stated they would build a dedicated supply chain for Chinese customers because China is the world's largest electric vehicle and telecommunications market. Detaching from the Chinese supply chain means losing industry influence. The CEO of ST Microelectronics was even more blunt saying, the missionary era is over. The innovation speed of China's EV market is number one in the world. Not producing in China means missing the development opportunities of the entire industry. The choice of European companies is essentially the choice of the market. No one wants to mess with their own livelihood. Secret number three, the global chip supply chain is restructuring and the U.S. is being marginalized. Over the past few years, the U.S. has been trying to pull allies into small circles, attempting to build a chip supply chain detached from China, for example, pushing TSMC and Samsung to build factories in the U.S. for so-called chip localization. But ideals are lofty, while reality is harsh. TSMC's Arizona factory has faced repeated delays, with endless problems regarding labor shortages and cost overruns. After receiving $1.5 billion in subsidies in 2024, the mass production timeline was pushed back to 2027. Intel's $30 billion factory in Ohio is also progressing slowly. Originally planned for production in 2026, it will likely be delayed. In contrast, Europe is taking the path of cooperation and win-win. It not only launched the 43 billion euros CHIPS Act to support local capacity but also actively cooperated deeply with Chinese enterprises. In 2023, TSMC, together with Bosch, Infineon, and NXB, built a 28 nanometers factory in Dresden, Germany, with a total investment of 10 billion euros. The German government directly subsidized 5 billion euros. Construction started smoothly in August 2024 and production is expected by 2027. This dual layout of local capacity plus China market gives Europe a huge advantage in the restructuring of the chip supply chain, consolidating local industry without missing the dividends of the Chinese market. More notably, the world is moving away from the US small circle. Japan's Toshiba and Renesas are increasing local expansion while actively strengthening technical cooperation with Chinese companies. India's Tata Group is building factories with TSMC, aiming to serve the Asian market. And China has united more than 70 companies to establish the Integrated Circuit Standardization Committee to promote an autonomous standard system, raising its chip self-sufficiency rate from 15% to 25% in 2024. The U.S. wanted to rely on blockades to create an exclusive supply chain, but the result is self-isolation. The global industrial chain is developing toward multipolarity, and the U.S. is slowly losing its dominance. By now, you should understand, the U.S. approval of equipment supply for TSMC's Nanjing plant is not a gesture of goodwill, but a helpless compromise driven by market laws, industrial dependence, and global gaming. 
from the hardline blockade of 2022 to the proactive loosening in 2026, the shift in these few short years has thoroughly exposed the fragility of U.S. chip hegemony. The global industrial chain has long been deeply intertwined, and any attempt to sever it will ultimately backfire. For China, this is both a warning and an opportunity. It is a warning that core technologies must be autonomous and controllable. We cannot leave our fate in the hands of others. The opportunity lies in the global market's hunger for a stable supply chain. As long as China's chip industry persists in open cooperation, it will surely occupy a more important position in the global industrial chain. Finally, I want to ask everyone, do you think the U.S. will continue to loosen chip controls on China? How should China's chip industry seize the current opportunity? Welcome to leave a message in the comments section. Follow me, and I will continue to break down the underlying logic of the global tech industry for you.